Welcome to Question It, the podcast where we challenge the status quo and rethink what we know about wellness and living our best lives. I'm Kevin, your host, guide, and sometimes guinea pig on this journey of exploration, understanding, and growth. In each episode, we'll dive into provocative topics, question long-held beliefs, and explore alternative approaches for meaningful change. If you're ready to step outside your comfort zone and embrace new ideas, you're in the right place. Let's embark on this journey together, questioning, exploring, and experimenting to make life a little easier and happier. Let's question it. What if some of your beliefs aren't as true as you think? Episode 3, AI. If you've watched my original video or listened to episode 3, you'll know that so much of what we believe to be 100% certain and true is simply not. Episode 3 of Question It was a repurposing of my original video that I posted to YouTube actually a couple of years ago. This episode, 3 AI, I'm creating using Google's Notebook LM. So what I've done is I've imported my original video that I created in real life. I imported that into Notebook LM to create an AI deep dive generated conversation. And that's what this episode is all about. I think it's a super interesting way to experience this AI deep dive into the topic of what we believe to be true, but has turned out to be completely false. So let's see how AI interprets my original video. Ready to dive into some assumptions we often make about, well, everything. Get ready to hit the reset button on what you think you know, because we're talking tabula rasa today, folks. It's about approaching the world with fresh eyes. Exactly. And we're taking inspiration from Kevin R. Strauss and his YouTube channel. He's all about this idea of challenging those beliefs we cling to maybe a little too tightly. He really encourages viewers to look for those simpler solutions, you know, cut through the noise. Which makes sense. Coming from him, the guy's a biomedical engineer with, get this, 80 patents to his name. Talk about someone who values truth and evidence. Absolutely. And he dives right into this idea that throughout history, so much of what people considered unshakable truth turned out to be, well... Downright wrong. Yeah, flat out wrong. His video had some great examples. I mean, the Earth being flat. Oh, please. Someone get that planet a telescope. Right. Or the whole Earth being the center of the universe thing. It's wild how long those ideas stuck around. It's like, guys, come on, look up. <laughs> And it's not just those big universe-sized concepts either. Strauss even mentioned how people used to think sneezing was about expelling evil spirits. You'd think a good sneeze in the face of that idea would change some minds, right? Talk about an exorcism. <laughs> but seriously, it makes you wonder what those explanations did for people back then. I think it points to a very human need, right? To make sense of the world, even if those explanations aren't quite hitting the mark. Maybe it gave a sense of control or order. Who knows? It's fascinating, though, isn't it? Yeah. It makes you wonder, what are we taking as gospel today that people will be shaking their heads at in the future? Oh, I'm sure there's plenty. And that actually leads right into the next mind-blowing point Strauss makes. It's easy to think, oh, those were simpler times. People were so gullible back then. But Strauss brings up some surprisingly recent examples of debunked beliefs that make you realize... We're not so different now, are we? Not really, no. It's like this weird time warp thing where we've got all this information at our fingertips now, but those basic human tendencies, they haven't really changed all that much. It's true. We're still clinging to stuff that's just not holding up under scrutiny. Like what? Well, he talks about the whole eight glasses of water a day thing. Oh, yeah. Which turns out there's really no scientific basis for that. Yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, gets repeated so often people just sort of accept it as truth. Right, like where'd that even come from anyway? Who knows, really? But it goes to show how powerful widespread adoption of an idea can be even without that like rock solid evidence. And, and it's not just, you know, harmless stuff like water intake. Strauss brings up this belief that babies don't feel pain, which wasn't really challenged until, get this, 1987. Seriously. 1987, that just seems, I don't know. Barbaric, almost. Yeah. It's kind of horrifying when you think about it. And it makes you wonder, how could something like that persist for so long, especially in, like, the medical field? Well, I think it highlights how powerful tradition and those authority figures can be, right? 
we're kind of conditioned to trust certain sources of information, no questions asked, especially when it's so ingrained in, you know, our upbringing, cultural norms, all that. So are we basically doomed to repeat these cycles of misinformation then? Not necessarily, but it takes effort. I mean, think about it. Even with all this information at our fingertips, we're still prone to, well, biases. Oh, 100%. Right. Confirmation bias. We tend to gravitate towards information that already aligns with what we think, creating these echo chambers that just reinforce those biases. It's so true. Social media algorithms are like, oh, you like this one thing. Let's just show you more of that and nothing else. Exactly. So you're really not getting the full picture, are you? And that's where Strauss's whole think for yourself and feel for yourself thing comes in. There's that balance again, trusting your gut, but also being like, Okay, good. Why are you telling me this? Yes. It's almost like we need to like retrain our brains to be more open to being wrong. Yeah. You know? Oh, absolutely. And I think that's what's so powerful about this whole think for yourself, feel for yourself idea. It's about being more like intentional, more discerning about the information that's coming at us. Right. Like trusting your gut, but also being willing to cross examine your gut. Right. Like gut. Why are you so convinced about this? What's the evidence here? Exactly. And that questioning, that willingness to admit, hey, I might be wrong here. That's where the real progress happens. In fact, Strauss actually uses the catastrophic failure of the mental health industry as a prime example of this. Oh, wow. OK, that's a bold statement. It is. But he sees it as this field that's like ripe for this kind of radical rethinking. It's interesting, right? Because it makes you realize even those systems, institutions, whatever, that we consider like yeah. well-established, they deserve that critical eye every now and then. They do, because you never know there might be a better way. And that's what's so exciting about this whole tabula rasa thing. It's not about throwing everything we know out the window, but it's more like approaching the world with this sense of curiosity like a beginner's mind and and humility, honestly, you know, being open to the idea that we don't have it all figured out. So how do we even begin to do that? Like if we're trying to cultivate this like more discerning, open minded approach, what are some practical things we can start doing? Well, I think a good first step is being really mindful of the information we're taking in, right? Mm -hmm. And the sources we're trusting. Seek out those diverse perspectives. Yes. Even and maybe especially the ones that make us squirm a little bit, right? Exactly. Because <laughs> if you're only surrounding yourself with people who agree with you all the time, where's the growth in that? Right. Like a constant echo chamber. Exactly. And you know, be open to those respectful dialogues with people who hold different opinions. You might not change your mind, and that's okay, but you might learn something new. You might gain a fresh perspective. Absolutely. And I think a huge part of that is being able to recognize our own biases. Yeah. Right? Those like unconscious filters that we might not even realize are like shaping how we see things. Yeah. Pay attention to your emotional reactions. Like if you find yourself getting defensive or or even just like uncomfortable when you encounter certain information, take a step back and ask yourself why that is. Is it challenging a deeply held belief? Is it highlighting a blind spot you might have? It's all about that self-awareness, right? Absolutely. Wow. This has been... Uh, a lot to think about. It's like a call to action for all of us to be more, I don't know, conscious, yeah. critical thinkers and to maybe like approach the world with a healthy dose of skepticism, even about the stuff we think we've got figured out. Because the more we question, the more we learn, the more we grow. And who knows what amazing discoveries are out there waiting for us when we're willing to be a little bit uncomfortable to let go of those outdated beliefs. So here's something for you to ponder. Yeah. What's one belief you hold that you could stand to maybe put it under the microscope. It could be about yourself, the world, anything really. What assumptions are you holding on to? And do they still hold up, you know, given what you know now? It's a good question. It is. And if you're looking for more of these thought-provoking questions, make sure you check out Kevin R. Strauss on YouTube. He's got this way of making you question everything you thought you knew, but like in a fun way. <laughs> Until next time, everyone, stay curious. So what did you think? Pretty interesting, right? I just love this idea of pairing my original content with an AI interpretation. Let me know what you think and which version you prefer. Or do you like using both the original and the AI as a complimentary episode? If you'd like to continue the conversation about false beliefs, I hope you'll join this episode's Uchi Tribe, which I'll be pairing with episode 3's Uchi Tribe. So episode 3 and 3 AI will be one Uchi tribe together. Let's have a deeper real life 
albeit asynchronous, conversation. Click the Uchi Tribe link in the show notes or reach out to me directly. Episode 3 AI of Question It, done. Thanks for joining me on Question It. Remember, growth happens outside your comfort zone, so keep experimenting and embracing change. If you enjoyed this episode, connect with me in the show notes, leave a five-star review, and request to join this episode's Uchi Tribe. Until next time, peace, love, and connect.